What's happening, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode with Mom and Papa Joe. Today on the menu is some baby back ribs. We're continuing our series of oven cook. This is going to be video number five. So far, we've done beef ribs, uh, pork spare ribs, briskets, and pork butt. What's great about these videos uh, is that they come out looking exactly like they would off of the smoker. So you're going to want to check this out. I will link all those videos at the end of the video. Let's get it going. So we've got two beautiful racks of uh, baby backs. Smithfields, all natural. As usual, I'm just going to get these to the sink, rinsed off, and dry. All right, we'll just do a little cleanup. Just try to pretty these up a little bit. See a little bit of this silver skin right here. We're going to remove. Not going to be a whole lot to, to trim in these. Anything that's loose, I'll knock off. We're going to come back, take off this membrane. And we're going to get the seasoning. Not going to be using a binder today. These are pretty uh, moist. I'm going to be using my 16 mesh cracked black pepper. I used this last week and really loved it. This Grand Oaks Lone Star Dust. I think it's going to really work well uh, in the oven. I'm one of those folks. I think baby backs are not as flavorful as uh, spare ribs. So I'm going to level things up a little bit with my body of complete seasoning. So first thing I want to lay down is a light base of cracked black pepper. And I don't think it's uh, important, folks. You can use whatever rub you wanted to, whatever rub you had in the house. But I think these are really going to make things happen. I'm going to come back with that body, complete seasoning, not a whole lot of salt, but a lot of flavor. I'm normally a spare rib guy, but only recently have I started enjoying baby backs. And then we come back with our Grand Oaks for that color and that barbecue flavor. Large granules. Definitely want to pat those in. All right, then we'll flip and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Cracked pepper. These oven cooks are designed, folks, for, for people who may not have a grill, cannot grill, don't want to fire up the grill, rainy day, whatever the case might be. Uh, these are perfect. Only thing missing from a traditional barbecue is going to be the smoke slash grill flavor. But there's a surprise. For these ribs that you'll hear in a minute, I'm going to be making a special glaze a peach, a sweet peach tea glaze, homemade. We'll check that out in a few. Give that a little pat in, and we'll allow these to sweat for a couple of uh, 10, 15 minutes while we preheat our oven to 275 degrees. All right, folks, we've got a nice sweat going, and I kind of went out of order earlier because I normally would season the top side of my ribs on my cooling rack. Uh, you're definitely going to want some sort of cooling rack just to keep your uh, ribs off at the bottom of your sheet pan. I've got it lined with foil to make cleanup a little easier. But I'm going to come in here and just situate the ribs in the shape that I want them to cook. If for some reason the dripping started to smoke while you were cooking, uh, you'd add a little water. But there isn't a whole lot of fat in baby back, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Let's head to the oven. So once again, we're preheated to 275, pretty much going in on my middle shelf. And we won't bother these uh, for maybe another hour and a half. We'll come back and take a look and see what's going on. All right, two-hour mark, folks. Let's take a look, see. Loving that color. Things are starting to render. We get some liquid on top. What I've got here is one part apple cider vinegar and three parts water. We're just going to do just a little misting. We don't want any water running off of here, but we just want to soften this little crust a little bit. And we're going to do this two more times in the next hour. Uh, at three hours, I think we'll be ready to butcher paper these. All right, folks, we're exactly at three hours. And I'm going to be wrapping these puppies. We're going to put these in some butcher paper. 
folks, we, we've achieved that natural browning, that Maillard reaction, where the juices and the seasonings all come together as one, get a little sweetness going uh, naturally. Nothing like cooking these uh, in foil from beginning to end and just saucing at the end. This is the way uh, it works on the pit. My same vinegar and water, I'm just going to soften my butcher paper a little bit, make it easier to fold. One more spritz. I spritzed these about a half an hour ago, and I want to start meat side down. Boom. And we're going right back in for give or take 45 minutes to an hour is a great guess. All right, folks. So while our ribs are cooking, we're going to start on this homemade peach tea glaze. It's a sweet peach tea. I got these at the dollar store. Tastes pretty good. I drank one yesterday. I'm going to start with two cups of this. There's my two cups. To that, I'm going to add some peach crown royal. Bam. Dear. Bam, bam, bam. All right. Half a cup. And folks, if you're not into alcohol, and you don't have to use alcohol, but you'll need a little additional sugar, uh, sweetness. So you might want to use honey, maybe some maple syrup, or you can even use some peach preserves, something along those lines. You know, uh, not all the alcohol is going to cook out. I've got here some sliced peaches. Mom and I keep frozen fruit in, the, in our freezer. No specific amount. I'm just trying to really amp up these flavors. Then I'm going to come back even more leveled up. While this is cooking, I'm going to add two tea bags, peach tea. This is all going to be reduced. And hopefully I'll reduce it down to uh, maybe half a cup just to get it nice and thick like a glaze or a syrup. So we've been cooking for about 20 minutes and we've reduced quite a bit. Uh, just before this starts to really thicken, I'm gonna remove the tea bags, uh, only because I don't want them to stick to the bottom or start burning, because I'm pretty sure that's gonna get bitter. But we've got 20 minutes of these tea bags leveling up and we're gonna continue to reduce down to about a half a cup. All right, folks, once you start seeing these smaller bubbles, like you're cooking candy, it's a great indication that uh, you are where you need to be. You've reduced. And if you want to double check, uh, pour a little bit or scoop a little bit in the spoon and allow it to cool. This will thicken as it cools. So you don't want to take it too far. If it cools and it doesn't thicken, then you need to cook a little longer. But I'm turning off the stove and I am removing it. I'm down to about that half cup that I spoke of. All right, folks, it's been an hour. Let's give these a check. Got my hot gloves on. We are almost there. Folks, I know, and I've said it a million times, when I feel like I can poke a hole through, we still got a little pushback. So I'm gonna give these another 15 minutes uh, before we call it good. I'm not going to even bother checking that one. 15 more minutes. All right, folks, it's been another 15 minutes, man, and I think uh, that should get it done. Look, that's what I'm talking about right there. See that? I can, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> but I can poke through that. We're going to get these sauced with our homemade peach tea. We're thickened up nicely. This is uh, pretty much room temperature right now. We're just going to give the bottom a quick brush. You know, this isn't as thick as your traditional barbecue sauce, but it is tasty. It's got a nice peachy zip to it. I like it. Those peaches in there are also pretty tasty. A little on the mushy side. That should do us, and we're going right back into the oven for maybe another five to seven minutes just to set this little glaze. 
All right, we've given this about seven, eight minutes. And I'm here to tell you, they smell and look absolutely wonderful. Folks, tell me that's not legit right there. Woo-wee. All right, let's get them on this cutting board. All right, folks, we've given these a few minutes to cool down, man. I'm going to slice the one with that little piece of peach on it. If I had anything to do over, I would make a double batch of this glaze because I would have loved to have placed another one on top, but it just wasn't enough. But that glaze is absolutely delicious. And I even hate to turn these over. Baby backs are just so hard to slice from the top. All right, I'm getting lucky so far. Folks, look at those juices coming out of there. <laughs> look at those juices. Let's flip and see. All right, half and half. <laughs> I totally messed up our glaze, but we know the deal. But folks, look at these juices. Wow. I mean, I can have that dripping off of there. <laughs> All right. Smells great. Tender. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Folks, that glaze is so good. I'm not sure what that whiskey does. But there's something about it that I can't quite put my tongue on. Well, I can put my tongue on it, but I don't know what it is. But if you get a chance, you ought to try this. Mm. Wow. Mm. Little, little over four hours with the glazing, folks. You're going to absolutely enjoy it. Baby back ribs in the oven with a homemade peach sweet tea glaze. Papa did it again. I want to thank you guys and gals for hanging out with Mom and Papa Joe. We absolutely appreciate it. Be on the lookout for another video coming soon. And as usual, Mom and I want you guys to take care of yourselves, love each other, and we'll see you when we see you. Holla!